Hey guys, welcome back to my channel once again. Today I'm coming at you with another reading wrap-up video. So we just got out of the month of October with Halloween and all that stuff, so it is heavily weighted with the horror genre. I mean, let's be serious, I, I pretty much read horror most of the time all year round anyway, so it's not really a big shocker. But, uh, but yeah, I got six novels that I read over the month of October. Some were better than others, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Alright, so first up, uh, this is the novel that I read most recently. It was Island by Richard Lehman. This is my second Richard Lehman novel. I read earlier this year, I read Funland, which I absolutely loved. I really did enjoy this one as well. I am fully aboard the Richard Lehman train right now. Um, definitely want to keep going down that road. Uh, again, like I said with Funland, um, Funland was a very erotic novel, if you want to put it that way. Uh, this was much more. Basically, uh, the novel centers around a group that is on vacation in the Bahamas and they charter out a boat to go to some uh, smaller islands, some uninhabited islands and like have lunch. And then it turns out that their boat gets blown up and it seems like an accident at first. And one of the uh, husbands of one of the daughters ends up dying in the crash and they thought it was an accident. Uh, but it turns out that actually he faked it. Well, he didn't fake he faked his death, basically, um, and he was alive, and then he ends up terrorizing them, and that's basically the gist of the novel. Uh, but the novel is written as one of our characters, one of the boyfriends of the three daughters uh, in this on this family trip, uh, basically writing a journal, and we are reading his journal as he writes it. So it's pretty interesting format in that sense, uh, but again, I come back to the uh, what I what I first said about it being an erotic novel, uh, this 17-year-old boy who's writing this journal is, I mean, he, I don't want to say he's a pervert. It A lot of the stuff he's saying is objectifying women, but I mean, it, it's pretty realistic to how a 17-year-old would probably think um, at that point of his life. Uh, so, I mean, it can be, I wouldn't recommend this for kids. Like I said, it gets a little graphic at times. Um, there is some pretty messed up stuff that does uh, that does happen in this novel. Uh, but it's a great read. It, it keeps you engaged. I read this pretty quick. I read this in like maybe three days. Um, I did have some time on my hands, so uh, I, I ripped right through it. But I did enjoy it. Again, Richard Lehman's two for two for me. So uh, I'm going to continue on with that. Okay, next up is the sequel to I Am Behind You. It's called I Always Find You by John Avid Linkvist. Um, so I Am Behind You was very confusing. Um, I reviewed it in one of my earlier videos, basically a Twilight Zone-esque um, novel that uh, really doesn't explain a whole lot to you. It was very confusing. It was still pretty good. So I was interested in getting to this one to see if it kind of shed any light on what exactly was going on in I Am Behind You. It did a little bit, I want to say. You kind of understand a little bit more. Uh, so this one, it's a totally different novel, though. It's a, a loose sequel, I would say. Um, so this one basically follows a gentleman who lives, who gets an apartment in, I guess, a lower income, like, apartment building, and starts to find that in there is this room in the communal um, washing uh, state, uh, clo uh, laundry station, that's what I'm trying to get at there, um, that, you know, has this kind of substance um, leaking through the wall that I believe is kind of a gateway to this alternate reality, which is where I Am Behind You takes place. Um, so they kind of can experience, they can go in and out and experience um, times in this alternate reality. Um, and eventually it basically consumes him and his neighbors in this apartment building uh, to the point where it, it, it takes over their life. It almost reminded me of like a, an allegory for drug addiction. Uh, so, I mean, like I said, it did kind of clear, it, it did open things up a little bit to what happened in I Am Behind You, uh, but not a whole lot. I have read online that there is a third to this. It is a trilogy. And if you do read the third one, it does bring everything together. 
Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because the third one is only in Swedish. It hasn't been translated yet back to English and there is no word right now if it will be translated back to English. So it's going to suck if I, uh, if I get left uh, with only two out of the three in the trilogy um, because I can't read Swedish. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, they do translate it back one day. All right, so next up is Fires of Eden by Dan Simmons. Sorry if, sorry if there's a glare. Sometimes my light tends to do that to these shiny covers. Um, so Dan Simmons uh, is one of my favorite authors right now. I love the Hyperion Cantos. Um, I loved Summer of Night. Uh, I went to this one next because it does have a character from Summer of Night. It's not like it's related to it at all. Uh, the character does reference Summer of Night and some of the characters in Summer of Night, but very loosely at points. It really has nothing to do with the plot. So this one basically follows, um, it takes place in Hawaii at this like very uh, ritzy resort and some weird stuff's going on and people are disappearing and nobody wants to go to the resort and the owner of the resort, who is this millionaire, uh, you know, cocky, like full of himself kind of guy, uh, is trying to sell the resort to these Japanese guys who are trying to take it over and turn it into a, um, a golf resort. Um, uh, I guess you could say. So basically, this um, delves into the mythology of the Hawaiian islands and their um, religions and, and things like that. I think at points it got a little bit too much to the um, factual side, like historical side. Like they're talking about like all these ancient um, Hawaiian gods and things like that. And I thought it just there was a little too much of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this novel was okay. I wouldn't say it was Dan Simmons' best work. Um, but I mean, it's still pretty entertaining. I find Dan Simmons is, is very unpredictable when he writes. Um, most authors that I like, it's like, you kind of know what you're getting, like King or Kuntz. Um, but with him, I feel like every time you're going into it, it's a totally different experience. And some are great and some are so-so. And so this one is more on that so-so side. It, it was still an okay read, but uh, uh, but yeah, not not his best work. So the last three books I read were a trilogy. Uh, I call it the Hatching Trilogy. The first book was called The Hatching. So basically this is a, I would consider this a sci-fi horror. Um, it follows a group that ends up unearthing a ancient breed of spider uh, in Peru on a dig. Um, this spider ends up being like it, it multiplies in at a crazy rate um, and it ends up, you know, laying eggs inside of people. So then when people travel, that's how it spreads, basically like a plague. And it ends up, you know, spreading all over. They, they end up spreading all over the planet and they just like swarm people and kill people and, and um, you know, everybody's dying. It's kind of like a spider post-apocalyptic um, novel. Um, this definitely, the way it's written, it has multiple, multiple points of view. Um, you're not just sticking with one character. Um, you're not even just sticking with a couple. There are tons. I found, I, now don't get me wrong, I like novels like that. Um, I've read a lot of great novels where, you know, each chapter is a different point of view from a different character, but I thought this was just, there was just a little too much. You, uh, you couldn't really keep track of everybody. Uh, the first book was really good. Um, it, it opened up a lot. It, um, it started teeing a lot of stuff up and, you know, it really got you excited knowing there were two other novels. The second book right here, Skitter, the series tends to get a little, uh, watered down maybe is the word. The best thing it had going for it was that it kept teasing, um, this giant spider, these giant spiders, like the Queens. Um, and, you know, I was really excited to, uh, to get to the point where these giant spiders started hatching. Like there'd be these giant, um, these giant like cocoons almost type things where they were, they were developing and, and gaining strength and the smaller spiders were, were feeding it and things like that. So I thought that was cool. Um, just the, um, the side stories with all the characters, like I said, made this series kind of get a little watered down. It was kind of like, what do I care about, you know, past relationships to this random character that you've just introduced to me type thing. So, um, could have been a little more centered around the spiders, I thought, but, uh, but on a base level, the whole, uh, spider plot, uh, was actually pretty cool. And the last book right here called Zero Day. So the hatching, 
Skitter, and Zero Day are the three books in this trilogy. Um, it's pretty good overall if you like creature features, if I'm going to use a, mo a movie term there. Um, don't read a too, too many books uh, that are considered a creature feature, but uh, I figured I'd give these ones a try. It's a Canadian author as well, so uh, supporting the CanCon there. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, check them out. Uh, pretty easy read, pretty fun little read. Okay, guys, if you watched this far, thank you for watching my entire video. Uh, again, give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe if you're into this type of thing, if you love reading, if you love the horror genre. And yeah, enjoy. Talk to you soon.